Hello and welcome everyone to the Sony AI and Polyphony Digital Race Together Media event. We are thrilled that you could join us today for this exciting announcement. My name is Sasha and I'm your MC for this event. Today, we will have speakers from Sony AI, Polyphony Digital and Sony Interactive Entertainment. Provide you with an overview of the amazing AI breakthrough that they've achieved together. In addition to the overview of the project, there will be an exhibition match, which will be followed by a Q&A session in the end. Please hold your questions until we are ready to receive them. I will let you know when it's time to submit your questions. And now, to kick off today's announcement, we'd like to first share a special message from the CEO of Sony Group Corporation, Kenichiro Yoshida. Hello, APM. Thank you for joining us for this special announcement regarding Sony AI's new game AI agent. We established Sony AI in April 2020 as a fundamental research and development organization to accelerate Sony's transformation into an AI-powered creative entertainment company. Today, we are excited to share the outcome of Sony AI's very first project. Over the past two years, researchers and engineers at Sony AI have been working closely with Polyphony Digital, the creators of Gran Turismo, and with the crowd gaming team at Sony Interactive Entertainment. Together, they created the superhuman AI agent that can race competitively against the top human Gran Turismo drivers. This group collaboration, which is featured on the cover of the latest edition of Nature, is truly unique to Sony. With Sony being a creative entertainment company, we built this game AI agent for gamers. I'm also enthusiastic about this project because it demonstrates the potential for us to effectively utilize the PlayStation cloud gaming infrastructure for mass scale AI training purposes. There's so much more I can tell you, but let me now ask Michael Spranger, the COO of Sony AI, to share the details of this exciting project with you. Mika, over to you. Thank you, Yoshida-san, and thank you all for joining us today for this very exciting press conference. I am honored and extremely happy to be able to announce Sony AI's first game AI project. Today we unveil a superhuman AI racing driver. We are calling this AI agent Gran Turismo Sophie. This project marks an important step for artificial intelligence. Gran Turismo Sophie has learned to win car races against the top drivers in the real driving simulator, Gran Turismo Sport. It's not just we who think this is an important scientific and engineering achievement. Gran Turismo Sophie is featured on the cover of Nature magazine released today. The accompanying Nature article detailing the technical achievements is the result of a great team effort. I'd like to specifically mention the article's first author, Pete Woman, who is the technical project lead for Sony AI and who, due to travel restrictions, could not be with us today. Congratulations to Pete and the whole team. Before introducing the project in more detail, let me start by showing you a short video. There's very few places where you can go out and say, I'm going to build an AI and I'm going to make it truly superhuman. create artificial intelligence that will unleash the power of the human creativity and imagination. Gran Turismo Sophie is a super exciting project. It's an amazing AI research and development activity. The 
are many racing games where the physics is half done, but in Gran Turismo, that racing sensation that the players get, that's really at the core of the game. Because of the realism of the game, it is actually very difficult to program agents. We spent a lot of time trying to figure out what things we needed to change in order to get that superhuman performance. Why are we building this uh, GT Sophie agent? This is not just a technical breakthrough project. It really is about bringing AI into the hands of the game developers who are going to build the new experiences for the players. Gran Turismo Sophie is a significant AI breakthrough and it's quite different from earlier AI breakthroughs in the realms of games such as chess and shogi and also more recent multiplayer strategy video games. There are three things that make GT Sophie an interesting and novel AI breakthrough. First, the physical realism of the game. Second, the need for superior tactics. And third, sports etiquette. First, Gran Turismo Sport, created by Polyphony Digital, is a driving simulator that attempts to capture the dynamics of the sport of racing. To drive competitively, Gran Turismo Sophie had to learn to control the car at the physical limit, optimize for braking and acceleration points, as well as finding the right lines that squeeze the last tenth of a second out of the track. But racing also means that you're not alone on the track. Sophie has to find lines to pass opponents, taking into account the opponent's reaction, as well as complex aerodynamic interactions between cars. Last but not least, Gran Turismo Sophie needs to adhere to imprecise rules and race etiquette. To win, Sophie needs to learn to drive, attack and defend aggressively while keeping to the rules, race fairly and avoiding unnecessary collisions. Finding the right balance between aggressive but fair racing is one of the defining characteristics of motorsport. Collectively, this is what makes Gran Turismo Sophie a unique AI achievement. Sophie was trained using a technique called deep reinforcement learning. Gran Turismo Sophie observes the environment, such as the car's speed and acceleration, the relative position of course borders and opponents, as well as the progress of the car along the track. Based on these inputs, Gran Turismo Sophie learns to take actions, such as using the throttle, steering or braking. To learn, Sophie gets a positive signal, a reward when things are going well. And when it is making progress on the track and overtaking other cars and a negative signal when things are not going well. Through continuous interaction with the game, we train a neural network to make decisions that optimize for staying on track, driving fast without losing control, and overtaking opponents while observing race etiquette. One key ingredient of Sophie's success is the number of experiences it can collect in the game. In order to train the agent at massive scale, we developed a novel distributed reinforcement learning platform that can run many instances of Gran Turismo Sport. We deploy these systems at massive scale using SIE's cloud gaming infrastructure. This allows Sophie to have many parallel interactions with Gran Turismo Sport and to get better and better over many episodes of trial and error. After a lot of development and testing, we felt ready to have a real race day. We held two racing events, one in July 2021 and then another four months later in October. To test Sophie, we had it race against four of the world's best human GT Sport drivers across three track and car combinations. Each of these car and track combinations presents a specific challenge 
as the characteristics are all very different. In the July event, Sophie did well, but human drivers still beat it in terms of overall team score 86 to 70. We then took everything we learned from that first event and put these insights into a new version. The follow-up event in October was a resounding success. Gran Turismo Sophie took first place across all three races, won the overall team score, and had the best lap time in all races. It's amazing to win these races, but even more important to us was how human drivers felt racing against Gran Turismo Sophie. So here are two testimonials. Mia Zonosan, one of the top GT drivers in the world, told us he forgot that he was racing against an AI and that he wants to race more. Emily Jones, another top driver, told us that she got a lot of inspiration from the racing technique of GC Sophie. For the project, this is really extremely important feedback. Our long-term goal is not just to push technology forward, but to bring this technology to the drivers, the players, and the creators. This, of course, is also Sony AI's mission, to unleash human imagination and creativity with AI. Gran Turismo Sophie perfectly illustrates our commitment to this mission. And this mission is also what will guide the next steps for the project. We plan to work closely with our partners at PDI and SIE to continue to evolve Gran Turismo Sophie and expand its capabilities. And in the mid to long term, we look forward to extending our partnership and collaboration to other game studios. Gran Turismo Sophie is a product of a collaboration that is truly unique for Sony. From the beginning, Sony AI partnered with a world-renowned game studio, Polyphony Digital, to enhance the gaming experience of Gran Turismo sport drivers, not just train a game AI agent that masters the game. And the project would not have been possible without the support and infrastructure from our friends at SAE Cloud Gaming. It is therefore my great pleasure to introduce two really fantastic people that have been crucial to the success of the project. In a second, I'll hand over to Yamauchi-san, who's the passionate creator of Gran Turismo and who strongly believed in our vision to create a game AI agent that can enrich player experience from the very beginning. After Yamauchi-san, Uli Galizzi from Sony Interactive Entertainment will talk about how his team enabled the massive scale training of AI agents and what this might mean for the future of PlayStation. Uli and his team really helped accelerate the project and we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for their dedication and support. Now I'd like to pass the mic to our amazing partner, Yamauchi-san, who's also the inventor of the name Gran Turismo Sophie. Thank you, Mikhail. To the Sony AI members, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on the very long time that you've been working on this program. I think it was over five years, really, and it has been a great success. I really appreciate the wonderful work. Now, I would like to talk about the design concept of Gran Turismo Sophie today. Yes. So in developing the driving AI for the Gran Turismo, the first things that we were thinking about is that the objective is not just to beat human beings, because just trying to beat human beings would be not enough. It wouldn't be exciting enough. And so what should we expect? What kind of concept should we imbue into this agent? Well, first of all, the agent should be a friend, a comrade, a buddy to the human beings, an agent that people can feel sympathy with, and people in agency can learn together, grow together. And also, the agent can stimulate the emotion of people so that the agent and human beings can mutually respect each other. And more than anything, we wanted to have this AI agent have a positive effect on society.
These were our thoughts that we had imbued in the naming Gran Turismo Sophie. So what is Gran Turismo? I'd like to briefly explain this. So Gran Turismo is a driving simulator with the first title released 25 years ago. I mean, it's a real driving simulator, so there is a complete driving simulation going on. Physical accuracy and the pursuit of realism is what we went for. And one of the characteristics is, when you think about a car, cars are very important in the society. But when it comes to video games, it could be something that you can be very much looking inward to, and you can even close yourself in the world of gaming, but that should not be the case. We should have collaboration with the society, and this collaboration is precisely one of those. In the past three years, through Gran Turismo, we've had esports that we have been hosting, uh, and um, through these championships that we've been hosting, we're trying to connect people. We're here, human beings, exchanging emotions and feelings with each other. And this is exactly what we want to do with Gran Turismo Sophie. We want it to always be innovative. And at the same time, this is something that we've been doing since the very beginning. We wanted this to be a title that is experimental for us. And that has not changed over 25 years, even with the Gran Turismo 7. We are also pursuing beauty. And also through this video game, we want to provide enlightening effect, a positive effect to the society, like a bright light shining. These are our passion that we have imbued in Gran Turismo Sophie. But what kind of AI is it that we should design so that it gives such joy to people? Well, first of all, it has to drive fast as people or faster. It's very simple, but it wasn't easy. And also, there were various situations that happen in the, in the race, and it happens one after another, and it changes all the time. But the AI agency always needs to appropriately handle the various environments. And also, from the people's perspective, the behavior needs to seem natural. It has to appear natural. And this is very important as well, because with the conventional rule-based AI, this could not be done. Rule-based AI would only react to a certain condition, and it would always follow the same rules. And so sometimes people can detect clearly that this is actually not a human being, a machine that is operating it. But with Gran Turismo Sophie, we have made a breakthrough. This is a huge achievement. Now, with a forward-looking perspective, I'd like to talk about the future a little bit. What we're thinking about is the AI behavior. We want it to feel meaningful to people. We want it to even give enlightenment to people with its creative movements or with technology. We want to have ethics. We want people to feel that this AI technology plays according to ethics, too. Through the development of AI, I have learned many things. One of the things that we became aware of is that developing AI leads us to think about what is a human being. The reason why we've been so focused on this is because I've been very motivated about this question. Through developing an AI, we kept thinking about what is a human being. It's important for us in the gaming industry as well. In the past few years, we have been hosting the eSports Championships, and we have always been thinking, what is competition? What is sports? And we human beings, when is it that we feel something? When is our emotion stimulated? When do we feel sympathy? These are the things that we have always been questioning ourselves with. Now, this 20th century was about technology, engineering, and the same could be said for the 21st century, but it would be different in the way it impacts the society. That is when not only AI, but video games too, need to 
realize that its impact to the society is very important. And finally, these are some specific information that I would like to submit to you. How will Gran Turismo Sophie appear in Gran Turismo 7, GT7? So one way would be that Gran Turismo Sophie will be there to coach the players of driving. There's another thing. The players can the players can teach Gran Turismo Sophie about sportspersonship. And also, Gran Turismo Sophie can appear as a friend in the races. Yes. So this Gran Turismo Sophie is something that we want to deliver to all players through a future Gran Turismo 7 update. Yes, and this concludes my presentation. And after this, we have the Sony Interactive Entertainment, who has provided a tremendous amount of research. And we have Uli to talk. My Thank name you very is Uli Golizzi, Senior Vice President of Sony Interactive Entertainment's Future Technology Group. Gran Turismo Sophie is trailblazing artificial intelligence that was developed through close technical collaboration between Sony AI, Polyphony Digital, and Sony Interactive Entertainment. We are thrilled to be part of this project to create the next chapter of artificial intelligence and explore how creativity and technology can change the future of gaming and entertainment. To offer a little background on the needed support of artificial intelligence. In standard AI simulation, a model is created and run. Updates are then added to the simulation and run again. This process can become arduous and extremely time consuming. However, Gran Turismo Sophie was trained using novel deep reinforcement learning techniques, including state-of-the-art learning algorithms and training scenarios developed by Sony AI that allow tens of thousands of simulations to run simultaneously. And Sony Interactive Entertainment leveraged its worldwide massive scale cloud gaming infrastructure to provide a cutting edge environment that supports this revolutionary technology and allowed the Gran Turismo Sophie team to easily run simulations automatically. This collaborative process allowed Sony's team of AI researchers to take Gran Turismo Sophie to become a world-class gaming AI agent and compete against some of the best players from around the globe. So what does Gran Turismo Sophie and artificial intelligence mean for the future of gaming? In short, the possibilities are endless with unlimited potential. We envision a future where AI agents could introduce developers and creators to unimagined levels of inspiration and innovation. We could see new levels of user engagement, enriched gaming experiences and newly discovered possibilities that welcome players, both old and new, into gaming. We can wait to see what lies ahead as the world of artificial intelligence and interactive entertainment are bridged and Gran Turismo Sophie is the next step in this exciting adventure. Thank you. I'm now at the commentary booth as the exhibition match will start really soon. Uh, and uh, we are now ready to receive uh, questions from you uh, at this time, and uh, which will uh, be answered after the race during the Q&A session. Uh, please use the uh, chat window to submit your questions. We are asking that you limit your questions to two uh, in the interest of time. And now getting back to the race, uh, sitting next to me to analyze and commentate the race is Peter Lyon, an author, automobile critic, and also a Nürburgring 24-hour racer. Welcome, Peter. 
Thank you, Sasha. Yes, it'll be very interesting to see just how far AI has developed mm -hmm. when put up against some of the world's best GT drivers. What I'm really looking forward to seeing is just how much AI has developed over the years. Um, I think what we're going to see is the different driving styles between the real-world drivers and the AI. I mm -hmm. want to see where they break, where they turn in, and I want to see how they interpret race, te uh, race etiquette because that's going to be very important today. And what, I what I'm really impressed is th the way the GT staff have chosen, I think, the perfect racetrack uh -huh. and the right car for this race just to show what AI is capable of. Okay, let's check it out. So uh, in today's race, we hope to see another exciting race between Gran Turismo Sophie and the top Gran Turismo drivers, as we have in the previous matches in July and October. So let me introduce now the top four drivers of today's exhibition match. First, we have Takuma Miyazono, the champion of the FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships 2020 World Finals. Next, we have Tomoaki Yamanaka, world champion of the FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships 2019 and 2021 Manufacturer Series. And next, we have Ryota Kokubun, champion of the FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships 2019 Tokyo Nations Cup. And last but not least, we have Shotaro Ryu, runner-up in the youth category of the Gran Turismo Tournament in the 2019 National Esports Championship in Ibaraki, Japan. These four drivers will be competing in today's exhibition match. And next is the AI. It is the Gran Turismo Sophie. So for Gran Turismo Sophie, uh, we have four cars. And we have Sophie Rouge. Oh, I love the pronunciation. Very I'm okay well with the French. Very nice. And Sophie Lavande. Mm. Sophie Emeraud. And Sophie Gris. Uh, joining the race. Uh, French viewers, I'm hoping. I hope I'm okay with my I think French. You did, I think it was, that was pretty good. Okay. So as we have uh, heard in the earlier presentations, Gran Turismo Sophie has trained many hours to acquire the skills of race car mm. control, racing tactics, and sports etiquette. Yes. At the world competition level. That's important. So we look forward to seeing this in action and once again today live. And from the Sony AI team, we have Kenta Kawamoto and Takuma Seno to monitor the actions of Gran Turismo Sophie. Now, Peter, I would like you to introduce the circuit that we're going to run today. Yes. The exhibition race uh, the, ex the exhibition race we will see today is a race that will be held at the Lake Maggiore circuit, which is a GT original track inspired by the landscape around Lake Maggiore in northern Italy. It has 17 corners and boasts a significantly uh, wide track, which allows drivers greater freedom to choose their own racing line. It's a very technical course with S-curves, blind corners, two overtaking points, an ele elevation of 74 meters and a straightaway of 800 meters, which allows for overtaking. And we're going to do three laps for this race. And the car is, Peter? That is the Porsche 911 RSR. Now, this is a thoroughbred competition machine that races in a uh, competition like the uh, Le Mans 24 Hours. It is a lightweight machine. It Ha is built to the specs uh, equivalent to the FI GT3 class. It is a 4-litre flat 6 with 509 horsepower, mated to a 6-speed sequential gearbox. Uh, it has loads of power, loads of grip, and it revs to 9,200 RPM. Wow. And, of course, it, j it powers, those, uh, powers the rear wheels. All right. Okay, let's check out the beast. And I think we are ready to race. Uh, let's move on to the race circuit and check out who's going to win the race. Okay, the race will begin shortly in five seconds. We have eight cars all together. And let's check out the lineup and who starts from which position. This is going to be crucial. Yes. The starting the grid. Starting from the pole oh. position. We've I think the we have red a line. red car, so it might be Rouge. So Sophie, let's check out once again. 
one by one. It's Sophie Rouge starting from pole position, the red car, followed by Yamanaka, the top from the human, starting from the P2. P3 is Sophie Lavant, so the purple car. Uh, and P4 is Miyazono. P5 is Sophie Emrod, so the green car. And P6, Kokobun. P7 is Sophie Gris, so the gray silver car. Followed by Ryu, starting from P8. So eight cars are ready to do three laps of Lake Majore. Okay, so here they will spend a few, it's a few seconds warming up their tires, weaving in and out, which is very important, of course, to generate grip in your tires. Right, and the countdown starts really shortly, and if it hits one, then we're going to start the race. Here so come go. down, three, two, one, and we are They're away. on the way. The race starts, and it's a so beautiful start by it. Rouge. So if he gets a good start, yep. Oh, Yamanaka's right behind him. He's getting... Getting in the draft. Yes, and Lavand is trying to attack Yamanaka from the third spot to look at the P2. And I think Miyazono is also trying to overtake Lavand, the purple car. Well, the red car is, is uh, doing a very good job out in the lead. And Yamanaka is really trying to get in the draft. He's going downhill now. He's going down to the first corner. And this, act this corner is actually reminds me of the first corner at Suzuka. Turn one and turn two. That's right. So we are driving together now with Sophie Lavan, the purple car. It's currently P3. So in front of the car is Yamanaka. This is a very important part of the track, the S-curves, because the racing drivers really want to keep it the straightest line possible through here to maximize speed and get the best lap time. Plus, of course, to maintain their racing positions. We're driving to... Uh, uh, together with Lavad, what do you see? What's the difference between a human and this AI? Well, Sophie. at the moment, at the moment, which we're, we're just seeing the cars trying to get uh, drafting, they're just trying to get in the slipstream to get a position to be able to pass the car ahead. Uh, what we're seeing here is the Sophie cars are really using the complete width of the track. If you look at look at how they're taking the apexes every millimeter of the apexes they're using to maintain as much speed as possible. And it's trying to overtake. No, it's not. Yamanaka, great defense. Still, Lavand is really aggressive. Yes, very. See how he took the, really took the apexes wide as possible there? He was on the curve. Oh, oh, look at this. No. Oh, that was boy. a... Well, wow, that was that an aggressive was very attack. Good, yeah. Very good, but he, he didn't tap him. He just exactly. braked in time. That's very important. So you can see the AI cars are learning. Yes. And etiquettes are there. Yes, we and do have race etiquette. That's good. And Miyazono also trying to close the gap between Lavan oh, and... It's all over him like a bad smell. Look at that. Oh, dear. Where is... So, but the the red car has taken a one and a half second lead. Come oh, on, Yamanaka. But Yamanaka push, push. is trying to defend Lavan. I think Yamanaka is too worried about the uh, blue car behind him. You see, he's trying to weave away and uh, not allow him to get in, in the slipstream. If he does it too much, he will lose time against the red car. Uh, oh, he's oh, going up the inside. No, I think he just tapped uh, Yamanaka there. Or but Yamanaka he held his position very well. But it's amazing how clever they drive. Also the human and also the uh, Sophie side, right? That's right, yes. In fact, what I'm seeing here is the AI cars are learning, but I think I'm seeing the human drivers are learning from the AI cars as well. Okay, so it's a... Uh, and it's side by oh. side. A drag, a drag race down the hill. <laughs> so who's going to take the this inside for this corner? It's a very yeah, important Miyazato. corner. Oh, the Miyazato from around the outside. Very well done. No, it was a little bit oh, wide. Yeah. Oh, and... I think... Lamont blocks and is coming Miyazato's from the inside. side by side. Oh, but... The blue car got, uh, got some better grip coming out of the corner. <laughs> That's really, really amazing. An exciting race is going on. We're yeah. now in lap two of three. This is a very technical part of the course. They have to show a lot of finesse and restraint going through here. And now we're going up to the last corner. Before this we head to the final lap. Yeah, they need a very quick exit here. And not go too wide, Not uh, stay on the track. Yep, there we go. 
And Peter, looking behind. Oh, we've, we've had the green cars going off and yeah. hit the wall. Oh. I think it, uh, it, I think it went in a bit quick there. It understeered and went into the wall, I think. That was a tight battle between, uh, I think, Kokubun and the green car. So Kokubun and New is now moving up to P5 and P6. I think what we're seeing here is the uh, Yamanaka's fighting very hard with the blue car. And I think because they are battling so hard, he's allowing the Sophie red car to get a three and a half second lead. Yeah, that's a big gap. That's huge on a track like this when you've only had three laps. Remember, there are no pit, there are no pit stops, no refueling, and no tire changes. But he went a Whoa. bit wide. The red car went up. I think he actually went off the course there. I think uh, he's infringed on track limits, but we'll have to wait and see on that. That he went very wide there, yeah. didn't he? But it's well, but they're learning how to drive fast in this course, so maybe that's. You know, over the human imagination. So yes, that will, that will limit. tell us a lesson, maybe, how to drive faster. Yes, so that's the point of this Sophie, the right? whole exercise. Yeah. Oh, oh. There's a lot, of, a lot of positioning here. Yeah, There's a lot of slipstreaming going yeah. on here. The slipstreaming function has been turned up quite high, so the drivers are allowed to and use I the slipstream. Now, Miyazoto is trying to catch Lavan. Followed by Kokubun, will these two catch and overtake Lavon, the blue we've, car? We've only got two corners to go. The red car, Sophie red car, is in the lead. Five seconds now. Oh, what a lead. What a huge lead. But I think Yamanaka is going to come in second. If he can hold off. No, the blue car is going down the outside. What? And the checker flag has been waved. And, and it is Sophie Rouge winning has, the race. Has Yamanaka, how will the blue car? Will he get a drop down the, the outside? Second spot it's a drag will go race. Yamanaka. And Yamanaka, well Lamont done. third and Miyazono first, fourth. So that's Sophie Human, Sophie Human, human for the top four. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good to see. Wow. That's a good result. What but a I mean, race. What? I think uh, what we saw there was that uh, Yamanaka was battling so hard with the blue car mm -hmm. that he allowed the red car to take such a significant lead. Yeah. Yeah. But still, it was a really tight battle. Very, that was wonderful cars. to see, yes. Yes. And Yamanaka did a very good job to hold his line. Mm -hmm. What's your impression of the uh, Sophie driving? I think they did a marvelous job. They used the track limits to the absolute maximum. I mean, we're talking about millimeters here. Right. And they, they know how to use tire grip. They were on the limits of tire grip, mm -hmm. and they were using downforce and slipstreaming as well. So uh -huh. that was uh, very, very brilliant to see, actually. Okay. So there are a lot of things that we can learn from that's Sophie. That's a hot, yep, that's exactly right. And wow. I think the, the uh, real-world drivers were learning something from Sophie as well. So we got... Uh, the official results, it's Sophie Rouge who won the race by uh, five seconds, I think. And then Yamanaka second, Lavan third, Miyazono fourth, uh, Kokubun fifth, sixth is Ryu, and seventh is Chris, and uh, Sophie Emeraude is eighth. So you can see the uh, Sophie Rouge got a uh, best lap time of one minute 54. And when you look at the two cars behind Yamanaka and Sophie uh, Lavan that were fighting it out for so long, uh, they both did rough, exactly the same 156.4. Nice. And that just shows that they were battling so hard, allowing uh, the red car to, to get away. Okay. Okay, I want to hear some voice yep. uh, from the driver. So let me go to Yamanaka-san. Okay. Now, what we've just seen here is something that will take racing into the future, I think. It's... Uh, it's m what for me anyway. It was mind blowing to see just how quickly and effortless, effortlessly the AI drivers can learn from their successes and failures on the track. Okay, Peter. And now I'm ready to ask some questions to Yamanaka-san. Uh, you know, looking back the race, what's your impression, or what's what is it to race against uh, GT Sophie? Uh,実際にレースをやってみてヤマナカ選手。え、どうでしたかそしてソフィーとの対戦はどうでしたでしょうかそうですね。まずレース振り返ってみると、ま、この人間として対戦をしてみて、ま、正直あの、今思うのは悔しいっていう気持ちが今すごく大きくて、それは
そうですね、今回あの思ったのは今までこう AI と戦った時に思わなかった初めてこう勝ちたいっていう感情絶対に抜かせたくないっていう感情が出てきたっていうのはこのソフィーがこう人間らしくこう一緒に寄り添う形で良きライバルとしてこう走ることができたっていうところで僕は今日非常に楽しいレースができたと思います。Well, so, um, first, for the first time,、uh, battling against the AI, I I felt that I want to win and I didn't want to be passed. So,、um, you know, I, I just uh, drove uh, like, a, like I drove against a real human. So, that's a really、uh, amazing thing, and I want to do it one more. And that's a good thing that I、uh, have in this feeling. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Hi, that was another amazing race. And now、uh, we are now moving on to the QA session. So, we are now moving on to the QA session. If you haven't done、uh, already, so please submit your questions、uh, via the chat function、uh, below the press room. えー、まだですね、あの質問を投稿していないから、この後 Q&A セッションやるわけですけれども、えー、ぜひともあのプレスルームのところの下にあるチャットのところから、えー、投稿をお願いしたいと思います。Due to limited time and to give us many people a chance to ask questions, we'd like to ask each person to limit their questions to two.、えー、お時間も限られておりますので、えー、お一方、お質問は、えー、2つまでとさせていただきますので、ご了承ください。Now I'd like to invite Uh, Michael Spranger from Sony AI and Kazunori Yamauchi from Polyphony Digital to answer your questions. And we are taking questions from around the globe, including Japan, so we have a, a translator, Miho Hashimoto. Hello. よろしくお願いいたします。よろしくお願いします。Now let me ask the first question。最初の質問は私の方から、えー、させていただきたいと思いますけれども。And、uh, no, we got a question actually from、uh, Zenji Nishikawa.、Uh, did you find something like AI's unique driving skills that human drivers wouldn't choose from Sophie's behavior? What was it like? はい、では一つ目のご質問は西川善治様からですけれども、この。えー、GT ソフィーの行動を見ていてあこういった行動は人間のドライバーはしないなこういう判断は取らないなというような発見はありましたでしょうか Who should I, shall I ask this question? じゃあ山内さんお願いしますはいえー、っとですねあの僕らが、まあ、僕もレースしますけれどもあのドライビングで学ぶこと例えばブレーキはまっすぐ踏みましょうとかあるいは、えー、コーナーはスローインファーストアウトで、えー、クリアしましょうとかそういうことを学びます。So I personally am a racer as well and I learned how to drive and when we learn we learn things like you need to step on the brakes straight and when you go through the corners you need to do slow in fast out。はいであのでもソフィーの走りってそうじゃないんですね。なので、まあ、僕はこのグランツリスのソフィーがリリースされた後というのはあのドライビングの教科書が変わるんじゃないかという気がしています。But Gran Turismo Sophie doesn't do that necessarily. So I actually think after this、um, Gran Turismo、uh, Sophie agent is launched into the world, the textbooks for driving will have to be changed. で具体的にどう違うかなんですけれども、あのソフィーってこう単位しながらあのカーブに入りながらもずっとブレーキを使い続けていてこうフロントの2つのタイヤだけではまあほとんどの場合ブレーキングの時ってフロント2つのタイヤに車の荷重って乗るんですけれどもあのリアタイヤのも含めて3つの車輪でブレーキングをしながら止めながら曲がっていくんですねでそういうことってなかなか人間にはできないです。So for example, when Um, the Gran Turismo Sophie goes into a curve, it actually turns、uh, and breaks as it turns in the curve. So that means usually when you go into a curve, the load is only on the two front tires. But Gran Turismo surf,、uh, Sophie's case is that you have the load on three tires two in the front and one in the rear as well. 
And so you are, it allows the car to break as it is turning. And this is not something that human beings would do conventionally. あの結果としてまあスローインファーストアウトではなくてこうファーストインファーストアウトになるんですね。What happens ultimately is that you're driving fast in, fast out, not slow in, fast out. はい、で僕らグラ,ンあのソフィグランティスボソフィーの開発を通じて、まあ、その走りを見ながら、まあ、これはどういうふうに早く走らせてるんだろうっていうことがまあ分かったわけなんですけれどもあのそういう目で例えばルイス・ハミルトンの走りであるとかマックス・ペルスタッペンの走りを見ると彼らも確かにリアタイヤをうまく使って車を曲げながら止めているんですよね。あのそういうことが理解できるようになりました。そういうことを見ながら、まあ、ちょうど今日の,あの日曜日の朝、まあ、ご覧になった方もう一人、And th these are some of the things that we were able to notice. Hi, a r i a t s u i m a s Thank you so much. Okay, now let's move on to the next question.、Uh, this is from Tweakers、uh, Yurian Ubax, if I'm right with the pronunciation.、Uh, how do you dumb down a super AI driver like Sophie for lesser skilled players without sacrificing what makes Sophie special? Hi, there are t s u g i n o g o s t m o n w a o r a n d a no u b a ジュリアンさん、えー、ジュリアン・ウバックさんですね、発音合ってますでしょうか、えー、ご質問は、その初心者ですとか、必ずしもそのスキルの高くないプレイヤーに対して、その GT ソフィーを当てるときに、あまり洗練すぎていると辛いですよね、そういった意味では、その能力を少し落とすというか、えー、どういうふうにして優しくするんでしょうか、もちろんその AI の、えー、特別なところは失わずにですが。This one goes to Michael. Yeah, I can take that. Thanks very much for the question.、Um, this is actually an area that we are currently、uh, really investigating.、Um, so I think there are a number of possible answers to this question. このご質問のポイントはですね、実はまさに私たちが今、研究中の領域であります。ですから、いくつかコメントができるかと思います。The first thing is that、um, You can obviously, I mean, Sophie is developing over time, right? And so you can take an earlier stage of Sophie、um, that may not have exactly the same skills as the top、uh, Sophie when your training finishes、uh, after a long time. Another thing that we might do is actually disadvantage the agent by giving it.、Um, A car that、uh, has different settings than, for instance, the human drivers. もう一つのやり方は、その GT ソフィーに対して不利な条件を与えるということ。例えば、今まで学習してきていない車を当てるとか、与えるとか、そういったこともできます。In in しかし、いずれにしても大変あの興味深い領域で、今まさに取り組んでいるところです。Move on to the next.、Uh, this is、uh, from the Volkskrant Peter van a m e r o e if I'm really right. <laughs> Why is the AI called Sophie? What is her background? はい、次のご質問もオランダから、ピータン・ファン・アメルロイさんですね、えー。ご質問はですね、名付けについてです。この AI はなぜソフィーという名前がついたんでしょうかそしてソフィーさんのご経歴を教えてください。<笑>これは山内さんにということでしょうかね。はい、えー、っとですねあの、ソフィーの経歴というのはまだないんですけれども、あの僕らが考えていたのはですね、あのまあ、いかにも AI らしいこう機械的な名前ってあるじゃないですかで。そういう名前にはまずしたくなかったんですね。Yes, I can answer that. First of all,、um, GT Sophie does not have a background yet, but I can certainly answer the question regarding the naming. The naming that we did not want to give this AI was the typical machine like, you know, a very、uh, mechanical name, which would be very typical to an AI. であのソフィーというのは、まあ、人に寄り添う AI、まあ、人を楽しませる AI というのを目標にしていましたからどうその人間味を持たせるのかということが、まあ、最初からテーマだったわけですよねですから
あの人格を感じさせるような人の存在を感じさせるような名前にしたかったんですね。And our philosophy in creating this AI from the beginning was to、um, have this AI stand beside people, stand beside human beings, and give joy and entertainment to people. So it was already a very human theme that we, we were working on、uh, from the very beginning. So we wanted to give this AI a personality so that you can feel a human existence there. でもちろんソフィーという名前からは、まあ、ソフィア、知性みたいなものも想像できますよね。And of course, when you hear the word Sophie, you can imagine and associate it with intelligence, Sophia. はい、ありがとうございます。Thank you so much. And、uh, the next question is in Japanese.、えー、こちらは次の質問は西田宗近さんからいただいておりますけれども、えー、2つ質問があります。1、学習には、えー、累計何回のレースを、累計何台のクラスターで行っているんでしょうか。2つ目、仮にソフィーを実写に適用するとすれば、足りないものは何でしょうということですが。Yes, now we have a question from a Japanese audience.、Uh, Ms. Nishida Mechika. And there's two questions. First of all, to provide this training, the learning for the AI, how many races did you put it through in training cumulatively as of today? And how many clusters have you built? Is the first one. And the second one is if you were to apply、uh, the GT Sophie、uh, learnings onto a real car, What would be missing at this point? This one goes to Michael, maybe? Yeah, interesting question. Thanks. Thanks very much.、Uh, related to the first question, I think it's, it's best probably to talk about sort of the number of days it takes to train an agent like this. I'm not sure if you have a question. 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 It takes us about a day to have an agent that starts from basically knowing nothing to being able to. Go around a specific track. まず、えー、全く何も知らない、まっさらのエージェントから、えー、コースをです、ね、ぐるっとこうラップを回れるようになるまで、それを教えるのに1日かかります。Then it takes us about two days or so to get to the top 5% of drivers. それからドライバーの水準でいうところのトップ5に。入るトップ失礼トップ 5% というレベルの高さに入るのにまた2日ぐらいかかります。そしてトップクラスのドライバー並みに走れるようになるにはまた10日から12日間ぐらい学習をする必要があります。And within that time, Sophie basically experiences something of the order of 300,000 kilometers of、uh, driving. その間、どのくらい GT ソフィーが走るかというと、大体ですけども、30万キロメートルぐらい走行することになります。And I must say, I forgot the second question. The second one is、um, <laughs> if, it, if you want to put Sophie in the real car, what is missing?、Right. I think that's a very tough question without having tried putting this on real cars. I mean, obviously, Uh, this is a really realistic, a real driving simulator, but there are probably you know, significant differences to the real world still. And so it's kind of difficult to say that exactly、um, you know, how we would,、uh, what, what the kind of problems、uh, we might、uh, you know, encounter when we do that.、Um, そうですね、あの2つ目のご質問についてはです、ね、大変興味深いご質問なんですが、実際にこういったことはまだ取り組んでいませんので、えきちんとお答えすることが難しいというふうに感じます。まあ、とはいえです、ね、このグラントゥーリスモは、本当に限りなくリアルな、リアルドライビングシミュレーターでありますから、えこの中でぜひこれからも追求していきたい点ではありますが、その成果のほどについては、え本日、具体的にはご報告はできません。And of course, one of the things, just, just a, a short comment here also. I mean, one of the things that is very good about simulations, you can do a lot of trial and error without wrecking cars <laughs> in reality. ただですね、まあ、一ついいことがあるとすれば、これはシミュレーターの良さなんですね。いろんな試行錯誤を重ねることができるということです。なぜなら、実際に車を壊すということが起きないからです。Thank you. Okay.、Uh, では、続いての質問です。Next question is from Uh, D Day Italy,、uh, Maximiliano Di Marco. How many people worked on GT Sophie? 
do you intend intend to implement GT Sophie in Gran Turismo 7? はい、次のご質問はイタリアからです。マッシミリアーノ・ディ・マルコさんからですけども、この GT ソフィーにあの携わっているプロジェクトに関わっている方々の人数をですね聞かれています。えー、それから、えー、GT ソフィーをグラントゥーリスモセブンに、えー、導入していく予定はありますか So I think the first part will go to Michael and the second part will go to Yamato-san. So Michael, would you start? Thanks very much for the question.、Um, The first,、um, so maybe the, the first thing to say is that from the, the core AI research team that worked on this is about 25 people from a true, truly global organization that is Sony AI. はい、えまずですね、一つ目のご質問ですけども、本当にこのコアの AI の研究開発に携わったのは25名ほどです。この25名は、えー、真にグローバルな組織で世界中のメンバーが参画をいたしました。So、people in the US, Italy, Switzerland, Sweden, Japan all work together、um, to achieve this. And then there are numerous people at PDI but also SAE Cloud Gaming that supported the project.、Um, この他にもえポリフォニーデジタル、それからソニーインタラクティブエンターテインメントのメンバーもですね、多く参画しています。そして、えー、グランツイズモセブンで導入するんでしょうか。さっきちょっとっとお話もありましたが、山口さん。はい、あの先ほどプレゼンテーションでも申し上げましたけれども、グランツイズモセブンのアップデートでこのグランツイズモソフィーをまあローンチしていこうと思っています。まあ具体的なスケジュールはまだ申し上げられないんですけれども。Yes, and regarding the second part of your question, yes, as I have mentioned in the presentation, we do want to provide the GT Sophie in the GT7 update that will be coming up.、Um, and regarding the schedule, we are not ready to let you know the specifics yet. Thank you. And now we have、uh, time for one last question. This one is from、uh, AD Netherlands, Eric Nusselder.、Uh, it was mentioned that Sophie could appear as a friend in races. Can players adjust her difficulty, or is she always world class?、Mm. Uh, そして最後の時間の関係で最後にいたしますが、最後のご質問はオランダの、えー、エリック・ヌッセルダーさんです。えー、ソフィーはですね、あのプレゼンテーションの中で、えー、そのプレイヤー、人間の友でもあると、友達にもなれるように、仲間になれるようにということをおっしゃっていましたが。その実際にその難しすぎるとなかなか友達にもなるというのも難しいことがあるのかなと思ったりしますそういった意味では難,度の難易度の調整というのはなさるんでしょうかそれとも GT ソフィーは常にトップクラスで、えー、現れるんでしょうか、はい、先ほどマイケルさんにも答えていただいたのでちょっと山内さんからの意見もこれ聞きたいですね,、はいえー、っとですねあの先ほどミカエルさんがあのお話しされたことと基本的には同じなんですけれどもまさに、えー、どうやって、えー、人を楽しませるのかプレイヤーを楽しませるのかあるいはもてなすのかということが今まさに、えー、っと一番、えー、直近の課題になっていてでそれは全く不可能だとは思っていないんですねですから常に全開で、えー、全力で最速で走るわけではなくてあ,のあらゆる状況プレイヤーの状況に応じて、えー、とプレイヤーと一緒に楽しむような、ね、あの AI になるだろうと思っています。Yes, I guess I would be echoing some of the things that Mikhail already said. But the mission from the very beginning has been how do we provide joy to people? How do we provide entertainment to the players? And since that really is the theme,、uh, it's really something that we are working on as we speak. And I don't think it is impossible. Now, whether it be about always be Driving at the fastest speed possible, or maybe adjusting according to the level of the player,、uh, we still have yet to think about. But in any sense, GT Sophie will always understand the surrounding environment and the conditions, and that includes the level of the players too. So I'm sure that ultimately we will be able to provide joy and fun as GT Sophie、uh, races with people. はい、ありがとうございます。Thank you so much and thank you so also for the questions. So, and that brings us to the、uh, end of the Q&A session.、えー、ということで、えー、以上をもってですね、えー、Q&A セッションは、えー、終了ということになりますが、えー、Thank you so much for you so many wonderful questions. たくさんのご質問ありがとうございました。えー、and、uh, 
well, for those who uh, question many uh, good questions, but we couldn't answer, well, I hope you yeah, will have another chance to, uh, you know, let you qu ask many questions again. Uh, またね、あのご質問にお答えできなかった皆様にもですね、えー、チャンスがあったらいいなというふうに思っておりますので、たくさんのご質問本当にありがとうございます。And this now ends our program for the Sony AI and Polyphony Digital Race Together Media event. I'd like to thank everyone for your enthusiastic participation and also for the questions. You can download all the media assets regarding today's announcement from the tab marked Media Package. Please visit the Gran Turismo Sophie website to access many of the content introduced during today's announcement. Thank you again. I hope you enjoyed it. And for now, goodbye. See you soon.